What's the latest? Good morning, Jonathan. The latest is that these trade negotiations appear to be hitting a point of pause. That said, we should note that there uh, seemingly is an agreement to cut the U.S. trade gap with China, as well as for China to buy more U.S. goods and services, and the U.S. to increase farm and energy exports with more trade in manufactured goods. But this is very soft on details, with the dollar amount reduced from the trade gap and the end of Made in China 2025 plan coming as the president has seemingly lifted trade restrictions on Chinese telecommunications firm ZTE, despite receiving pushback on Capitol Hill, not only for Democrats for that decision, but also from Republicans. I should also note that the president is receiving some pushback from red state agricultural Republicans as a result of his agricultural push. Uh, and we've seen the response from the Chinese on sorghum and soybeans. I also want to note some of the market reaction because particularly in the commodities sector, he is President Trump is receiving some criticism from former Nucor CEO Dan D'Amico, who just tweeted within the last half hour that the Chinese are laughing all the way to the head of the class. He says that the Chinese have never delivered on one promise in the past, and appeasement is the devil's friend. He goes on to write that energy instead of value added for manu manufacturing uh, manufacturing products. And Senator Marco Rubio, one of the Republicans also at the center of this debate, tweeting out that China is winning in the negotiations. Their concessions are things they plan to do anyways. Hashtag losing. Now, Senator Rubio has also, just within the last week, Jonathan, sent a letter to President Trump urging him to also take a look at intellectual property. That's something that a lot of Republicans and Democrats on Capitol Hill are concerned about through the lens not only of the U.S.-China bilateral talks, but also as we near the end of NAFTA negotiations as well. Kevin, within the administration, and just quickly, um, Greg Valliere of Horizon Investments in his morning to know this morning, running that you're probably going to have a very unhappy Peter Navarro and a very unhappy Mr. Lighthizer as well. What could the consequences be of that after this weekend? Well, I think it was a great point from Greg's note earlier today. And very quickly, I would just note that the policy differences between the likes of Peter Navarro as well as Secretary Mnuchin really exemplified in their personal differences on the secretary's recent trip to Beijing. The president, that said, does like to have a diversity of ideological thought within his economic worldview. And Mr. Navarro has ascended following the ousting of Steve Bannon.